Hi, I'm Steve Borey, author of the American Casino Guide. For the past 25 years, it's been the number one best-selling book about casino gambling and travel, and the only book that comes with more than $1,000 in casino coupons. Each month, we upload a new video about how casinos work and how you can win. So, if you want to learn how to be a better gambler, be sure to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget that we have a free app. Just search for American Casino Guide in the App Store or Google Play Store to download it to get details on all U.S. casinos, plus tips for playing and free casino coupons. The insurance bet in blackjack was introduced to give the perception to players that they are going to protect their hand against the dealer's blackjack. And insurance has specific rules, and I'm going to go over them now so that you understand what insurance is all about. When you're playing blackjack and the dealer has an ace as an up card, she'll basically stop the game and ask players if they want to make the insurance bet. Now, the insurance bet is a separate bet from your main bet, and all you're doing is you are betting that the dealer's hole card is a 10 either 10 jack, queen, or king. And of course, if the dealer has a 10 as a whole card, the dealer will have a blackjack. Now, the casino rules basically specify that you can bet an amount on the insurance equal to half of your original bet. So, for example, if you made a $10 bet on your hand and the dealer showed an ace, you can bet up to $5.00 on the insurance bet. Now you make the insurance bet by putting your chips on the insurance line and that insurance line is on the layout it's between you and the dealer and it runs the whole length of the uh, blackjack table. So what happens if you make the insurance bet? There's, there's two possibilities. The first is the dealer has the 10 in the hole and your original bet is then going to be lost unless you have a blackjack. So if the dealer has a 10 in the hole, the dealer will have a blackjack. Your original $10 bet will be lost. However, the $5 bet that you made on the insurance line is going to be paid off at 2 to 1 odds. So all insurance bets have a 2 to 1 payoff odds. So let's review again. You lost your original bet for $10, but your $5 insurance bet wins you $10. So in this scenario, you basically break out even. Now the other thing that could happen is you make the insurance bet and the dealer doesn't have a blackjack, in which case the hand will continue. So most players will think of the insurance bet and say, isn't it better if I protect my hand against a dealer blackjack by making the insurance bet? And therefore they go ahead and they will insure their hands against that dealer's blackjack. But let's look at the facts about the insurance bet. First of all, regardless of what you, the casino say, the insurance bet has nothing to do with your original bet. It doesn't decrease or increase the odds of your winning your original hand. The second thing is that the insurance bet is strictly a side bet that you are making that the dealer has a 10. You basically are not insuring anything. The third fact, and some people may not like this, but I'm going to state it as best I can, the insurance bet is a sucker bet. You should never, ever take the insurance. Regardless of how much you bet, whether you bet $10 or $100 on a hand, in either case, the insurance is a sucker bet. Now, what do I mean by a sucker bet? Basically, it has a high casino advantage. Now I'm going to show you why I say the insurance bet is a sucker bet. If you look at a deck of 52 cards, you know that the ratio of non-10s to 10s is 36 to 16. And by 10s I mean 10 jack, queen, king. Non-10s are 2 through 9 plus the ace. So there are 36 to 16 is that ratio. Now let's look at the first example. The dealer deals the cards and she shows an ace up card. And for the moment, let's, let's ignore the composition of your two cards. 
Before the deal, the ratio was 36 to 16. Now, after the deal, the dealer basically has removed one non-10 from the pack of cards. That's her ace. So the remaining 51 cards no longer have the ratio of 36 to 16. It's now what? It's 35 to 16 because you removed one of the non-10 cards. Okay, so the ratio now is 35 to 16. Let's suppose you bet a dollar 51 times on that hand. What will happen? Well, 35 times, you're going to lose a buck. So you're down $35. The 16 times that she has the 10, you're going to win $2 because your dollar pays off at 2 to 1. So 16 times $2 is $32. So let's recap. You've lost $35. You've won $32. Overall, for every $51 you bet, you're down $3. If you divide $3 into $51, that comes out to a house edge of a little over 5%. And in my book, any house edge bet that's over 2% is a sucker bet. So let's look at the second examples. Suppose you're dealt, same scenario, you've made a bet, dealer has an ace, but this time in your hand you've got two non-10 cards, like a six and a nine, or any two cards that are non-10s. Okay, let's look at how much you're going to win and lose if you made the insurance bet. We start out with that ratio of 36 to 16 again, but now you removed an ace, which is a non-10, and you're sitting on two non-10s. The ratio is 33 to 16. Therefore, you're going to lose $33, betting a dollar on every hand for insurance. And you're going to win $32. That's the 16 times she has a 10. You win $2 each time. 16 times 2 is 32. So you lose 33 you win 32, your net loss is $1 for every $49 you bet. That leaves a house advantage of about 2%. Again, in my book, that's a sucker bet. Okay, the third scenario is the one that players always seem to feel that they have to make the insurance bet. And that's when they hold two picture cards. That's a strong hand. They see the dealer with an ace. They feel they have to protect that 20 against a potential dealer's black shot. So they go ahead and make the insurance bet. Well, the facts are that this is probably the worst situation to take the insurance because you've now removed from play two of the 10 value cards that are sitting in your hand that you want to be in the dealer's down card. Now let's look at that ratio again of 36 to 16, and I'll show you what this is going to cost you when you go make an insurance bet sitting with a 20. The 36 to 16 ratio is now going to change to 35 to 14. You remove one non-10, which is the dealer's ace, and you remove two 10 value cards, which are the two that are sitting in your hands. So, in this scenario, 49 times that you make that bet for a buck, you're going to lose $35, and the 14 times that she has that picture card, you're going to win $28. So your net loss is going to be $7. You divide that by $49, your net loss is going to be 14% house edge. And that is a sucker bet. So let's recap. If you are a basic strategy player, there's no scenario at all in which you even should consider making the insurance bet. It's a sucker bet, and therefore you should never ever make the insurance bet. Is the insurance bet ever a profitable bet? And the answer is yes. And that's if you're a card counter, because card counters are tracking the ratio of high cards and low cards, or to say it another way, non-tens to tens. And from the information that they see of the cards being played, they know when the unplayed cards are rich in tens. 
And that is when the insurance bet becomes profitable for a blackjack player. So therefore, the only time you should ever make an insurance bet is if you're a card counter. If you're a basic strategy player, forget about it. If you want to know more about me and my works, visit my website, either smartgaming.com or bjinsider.com. If you'd like a free three-month subscription to my Blackjack Insider newsletter, just visit www.bjinsider.com forward slash free trial. Don't forget that you can see more of our educational gambling videos on our YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com slash American Casino Guide.